community feedback. Hey Ben, I have an interesting question about Raspberry Pis. Okay. Is it possible to add a PCI Express lane to a Raspberry Pi for adding GPU? Probably not. Uh, PCI Express lanes are differential signals, uh, like a modern uh, x86 computer has quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. And that's how you add you know, things like video cards. There are a few exposed differential signal lines on the Raspberry Pi, such as for the LCD and the HDMI. Mm -hmm. But I don't think those are going to give you the same kind of access that you'd have with PCI Express. Oh, okay. I mean, you're basically talking about a completely different architecture. We have a parent here that's trying to build an entertainment system in their vehicle. Okay. I've got these portable DVD players that mount on the rear headrest in a vehicle. Right. I'm planning on removing the DVD guts, then replace with a Raspberry Pi version 3 with Kodi installed. Mm -hmm. Since this is to be designed with my kids in mind, I also plan to add in the necessary module for wireless game controllers. I was wondering if you would be interested in doing a build. I could send you one of the sets that I have. Ah, probably not for us to build, but I bet you could help them figure out how to build it themselves. Well, again, I think the problem that you'd have here is that you'd have to know what the signals are on the DVD player screen, mm -hmm. I mean, how it works. Um, I suppose, you know, if it was TTL, not LVDS, you can put the Raspberry Pi into TTL RGB video mode. It will use like the first 24 pins, actually like the first 27 pins. It does uh, eight bits RGB, that's 24, and then it has like H-Sync, V-Sync, and then dot clock, I believe. Okay. So if you had an LCD that had those signals, you could put the Raspberry Pi into TTL RGB mode, and then as long as you had the timing correct, you could directly drive an LCD with it. Well, I remember when we were doing the uh, Logic Gate board game and we had that LCD, yeah. like that 4.3 screen. That's basically the same kind of screen that's on the PlayStation Portable, the 2005 version, and that's a 24-bit RGB screen. Mm -hmm. So that, for instance, you could hook directly up to a Raspberry Pi, although you'd have to make your own device tree overlay for it to work. For the system boots up, you have to say, don't use HDMI, don't use video, use these pins in this mode. Oh, that's cool. But then with most Raspberry Pis, it would eat up pretty much all the I.O. Yeah. I mean, you still have like the USB ports or whatever, yeah. which would work for him with his uh, controllers. That could be an interesting project, like grab a rando screen and see if we can bodge it into a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I have done work with the device tree overlay and the uh, low level uh, video signals before. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna, okay, so like I have a portable DVD player lying mm -hmm. on the shelf over there. If you're gonna try to repurpose one of those old like portable DVD players, right. how do you know what to look for to figure out whether it will be compatible with Raspberry Pi or not? Well, you would look at the cable coming from the screen mm -hmm. and if it has well if it has it probably have about 40 connections on it actually mm -hmm. 24 of which would be the data three to five of which would be like the sync signals and the rest would probably just be power ground uh, hot plug detect things like that mm -hmm. uh, one challenge you might also have with that is a lot of those screens require 21 volts DC for the backlight Mm -hmm. It's a LED backlight, but it actually requires a decent amount of voltage. So you'd probably also have to have some sort of a boost converter for the voltage to run the, run the L LCD. That makes sense. Well, thank you for your comments on the Element 14 community. Keep posting those on element14.com forward slash TBHS. And I'll see you online.